Well, I certainly didn't know it. I don't know if you knew it, but there's a greenhouse at the Beardsley Zoo in Bridgeport. And within that greenhouse, there are some wonderful plants and some glass. Beautiful glass. Yes. All right. There's an amazing art show that's taking place there right now. It's featuring hand-blown glass. You've got to see it. All right, let's check it out. Hi, everybody. People come to the Beardsley Zoo in Bridgeport to check out the animals. But that's not the reason why I'm here today. I'm here to see a garden of glass and to be dazzled. Come on with me. Prepare to be dazzled by not only the beautiful plants in the Beardsley Zoo's greenhouse, but by the incredible art that's been woven into the landscape of these plants. Blown glass everywhere you look, all created by artist Peter Greenwood. Originally it was going to be 200 pieces, and then it turned to 300 pieces, and then I cleared out all the glass out of my shed, which was an accumulation of about 42 years of working with glass, and I had all these extra pieces left over from commission work, from special projects that I've worked on, and laid them out in my, in my gallery, and then started to assemble things that would look um, organic, that would look like they grow out of the earth. And so that's how that came about, and, and eventually it turned to be up over, over 500 pieces of glass. So how many? Over 500 pieces of glass. That's over incredible. Glass. This art slash plant show was the idea of Jessica Summers, the director of development and marketing here at the zoo. We were thinking of things for people to do to get outside during the colder times and our greenhouse is an amazing area that a lot of people don't always come out and see. And we thought if people were coming out and coming to the zoo, we would give them a little place to have, to warm up. And I thought, what else could we be doing in the greenhouse that would give them something fun to look at? And I've always loved the way glass is in, in the environment and what it looks like and the shine and how things can do off it. So I started thinking, well, I know we have fabulous glass blowers in Connecticut. Maybe if I reached out to one of them, they'd be willing to do an exhibit for us at the zoo. Jessica did a Google search for glass blowers in the state and Peter's name popped up. And he was so generous and quickly called me back. And he said, I believe I probably have 100 pieces. Two weeks later, it was, I think I have 200 pieces. And by the time the exhibit came together, he said, I have 500 pieces. I'm sure I can do it at the zoo. He took over the project and has been absolutely wonderful to work with. I had a lot of help unpacking. It took seven days to pack everything, and it took two days to set up everything. And a lot of the staff here really helped unpack things out of the boxes, so it moved things along quickly. The show opened March 6th to the delight of the public. These bowls are just, you know, that's something that I, I have in my gallery. I make a lot of those, and uh, I thought it, they would be nice floating in the water. And the, the fish seem to, to like them. At first, when we put them in there, they were afraid of them, but right now, they're, they're just comfortable with them. They seem to be a little coy. Yeah. These pitchers are just, you know, I, something that I produce a lot of also. I had some left over, and uh, thought that would be interested to hang them in the, in the rubber tree there. These curved pieces were left over from a, a table that I made. These pieces here, these white cones, uh, I, I did a piece that went in the Louvre in Paris, and these were the pieces that were part of the, the piece that I made that went in the Louvre, so these, these cups specifically were left over from the job that went in the Louvre. And these pieces are left over from a job, a repair job for a chandelier, a Venetian chandelier. Peter, it looks like it belongs here. I know, doesn't it? It looks like you grew it. <laughs> this, this is one of the pieces I, I like that, that I just assembled from different pieces that were left over. And I, that's one piece that I specifically like. And I think it's a nice touch what they did here with these. Don't these look like mushrooms growing right out of the soil? Something I learned today at the nursery, there are over 2,000 varieties of cactus, the glass kind not included. Boy, are they beautiful. These pieces were actually uh, left over from two different uh, sculptures that I did. So uh, I just kind of reassembled them to look like a flower to fit in here. This is bubble glass, clear glass. They're all blown and flat and flat. The show is amazing. I got to spend two days with him up here putting together things and he would be so nice and generous and say, well, what do you think of it there? And, I gotta tell you, he has so much, so many better ideas than I would of where placement was, and he just sees things. I think it's because he's an artist. He sees things that look good in and around nature, and I think the show speaks for itself, exactly how wonderful it works in the, in the greenhouse. Such beautiful work.
Such beautiful work. Dazzle. So incredible. You saw, right? You saw waves in that one particular piece. Yeah, I saw worms. You saw worms. I thought they were waves. I love Beautiful. that he's like, oh, and these pieces, you know, they came from the Louvre. So I, I just wanted to repurpose them. <laughs> Dazzle, a garden of glass, runs through April 6th. But there has been talk of extending that. So you want to check with the zoo about the dates. What a great way to get outside and, you know, be in the outdoors, Absolutely. see the zoo, see something beautiful. So nice in there. So you can reach out to uh, the, you go to beardsleyzoo.org and find out all about the schedules for the zoo. See some animals, too. Absolutely. And I should also let you know that everything is for sale at the end of the show. To reach Peter Greenwood, head to petergreenwood.com.